When I started selling on Amazon, I was an 18 year old college freshman. I had literally $1,500 to my name. And by the time I graduated, I was already making more than a lot of my professors were just by selling on Amazon. And I don't bring that up to flex or brag or anything like that. I just want you to be aware of what awesome potential there is by selling on Amazon. I was doing it part-time in college since I graduated college. And since I had that $1,500, I've been able to sell over $4 million on Amazon. So in this video, I'm gonna break down my journey selling on Amazon. I'm gonna break down how you can do pretty much the exact same thing. A lot of these methods are still viable, the exact thing I did. And so a few of you guys and gals who are tuning in right now are going to go out, take action and make a lot of money. The majority of the people watching this video are probably gonna tune out pretty soon, ignore it and not take action. So be an action taker after we're kind of breaking all this stuff down. But if you're brand new to the channel, my name's Warner Fields from Fields of Profit. I'm a full-time seven-figure Amazon seller. I'm super excited to break down my journey from just being a regular college student to building a decently successful Amazon business. And we'll get into it here in just a second. But if you're looking for more free resources to learn how to sell on Amazon, I'm gonna put a link directly beneath this video for our completely free Amazon seller discord community. It's over 45,000 people in there. You can go in there, learn some information, network with other Amazon sellers. Go ahead and check it out. Let's get into the video. So the first of three of the major eras that my Amazon business has gone through was the super early days selling on Amazon when I just had 1500 bucks, was super broke. I was just going out and selling used books, which for a lot of you guys probably sounds crazy. People are still buying plenty of used books online. And it's honestly a really good way to get into selling on Amazon because you're gonna be able to buy books for really cheap. And honestly, like the best way to start selling on Amazon is just going, looking at your own bookshelf that you've got at home, scan it with the free Amazon seller app and see what those books are worth, right? Box that up, send it off to Amazon. So that was what I did. Like the first little items that I sent off to Amazon was just books that we had sitting on a shelf somewhere. So after that, I got my first sales. I had kind of that proof of concept. I started going out to thrift stores and scanning books there, finding used books. In this picture right here, there's actually the first item I ever sold on Amazon is in this picture. I think it's really cool over four years ago, just selling up random used book. So I want to just go ahead and show you how to do that. I'm not just going to talk about how I did it. So I'll go ahead and break it down. So let's say you're in Kansas City. I'm going to run through this super quick, but let's say you're in Kansas City here. All I was doing was just throwing into Google Maps here, Kansas City thrift stores. In this case, you got a bunch of thrift stores to check out. I was just making a list of all the thrift stores that was in my city. I would hit pretty much every thrift store in my city twice a week, sometimes three times a week. I was waking up early. I'm not sure if Kansas City has some, but some cities will have like a Goodwill outlet or Goodwill bins where you can go and wake up and be there right when it opens. And it's it's kind of intense, but you can go and, and just look through these bins and look through bins of used books. And so a couple things that are going to be useful for you, if you do want to start with the used books route, if you don't have a lot of money right now, it's probably the best way to get started. I'd say if you have less than a thousand bucks, I would do the used books route. Go get this app right here. Get Scout IQ. See how it kind of works right here. You basically scan a barcode. It's going to tell you exactly how much that book is worth, how much profit it's going to have, what the sales rank is, how fast it sells, all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty in this video. I have detailed tutorials on everything we're going to be talking about today. So if that sounds interesting, go check out the Scout IQ tutorial. And then the only other thing you'll really need is the Yo-Yo barcode scanner or just any barcode scanner. I think this one right here is the exact barcode scanner that I would use. I was using this back in the day. Pair it up with your smartphone. Use the Scout IQ app on your phone. Scan the barcodes on the books. Throwing in some headphones, listening to podcasts, all that good stuff. And by the end of my first year selling on Amazon, just going out to thrift stores, sometimes I would even like take road trips to nearby cities that were bigger than my home city. So between the road trips and the going to thrift stores in my area a couple times a week, I was definitely spending a good amount of time. This business does take time. All the business models on Amazon take a lot of time. That's something a lot of people are not going to be upfront with you about. But that was probably spending 20 to 30 hours a week going out, scanning books, putting them in boxes, all that kind of stuff. It is time intensive, but in my first year, I sold just shy of like $100,000. Came up, I think it was like $4,000 short. I was a little mad about it at the time, but I was able to make about $30,000, $35,000 in true profit, which for a college freshman, I didn't have a lot of money before that. I had just been working for nine fifty dollars an hour before college. That was a lot of money to me, making thirty dollars profit all on my own time, all that good stuff. And so that really showed me what was gonna be possible long-term with Amazon. But the problem with used books is that it's not very scalable. That was something that I knew I needed when I started a business, especially getting into Amazon. I knew I wanted a business that would be able to run without me or not necessarily without my input entirely, but I needed to find a vehicle on Amazon where I could hire virtual assistants or my friends or something like that, where I'm able to take my time out of the business and start scaling. And so this is where my story is a little bit different from a lot of you guys who might be watching. I actually got into doing Amazon wholesale at this point, and I'm going to break down why this was a big mistake and why I thought I was ready for the big league, so to speak, with Amazon wholesale. So when we're doing books, you're going around, you're driving, you know, you're picking up a 
dollar a unit, two dollars a unit for used books. It doesn't really matter if it doesn't sell, right? Pretty much always they did sell, but who cares if it doesn't, right? With wholesale, on the other hand, I was going out, taking that money that I had made, and now I was trying to reach out, contact brands that were not already selling on Amazon and they didn't have like exclusive contracts. So I was just looking through Amazon for brands that had like three or more sellers. Amazon's not on it, like a couple of little criteria, but really just emailing brands that didn't have a strong presence on Amazon and trying to be kind of an authorized distributor for them to sell the products on Amazon. To open up those wholesale accounts, I was pretty much just emailing people as well. Early on in college, I had really bad social anxiety, so I didn't want to be picking up the phone and calling wholesalers all the time. I was super out of my comfort zone. So I was literally just emailing brands. And even just with emailing brands, I was landing several wholesale accounts. Some of those accounts, I still buy those products from them today, which is pretty cool. You know, a few years down the line, I've been able to continue those relationships, all that kind of stuff, just through emails is awesome. That you're able to build a significant income off of just sending emails saying, hey, can we buy your products in bulk? But where I went wrong with this business model is I didn't really fully understand how to do product research. I went straight from selling books into doing wholesale, where normally people go from selling books or doing retail arbitrage or something like that, where you're buying really cheap items, you know, clearance items, where you're doing retail arbitrage into doing something like online arbitrage, which is basically just a fancy word for buying stuff from walmart.com and then selling it on Amazon. The reason that I think that's a better way, and I honestly ended up doing this more, we'll get into that in a second, because you're able to go in and spend $50 on a product, $100 on a product, and then validate it, see if it works for you, and then buy more if it works. With wholesale, I wasn't able to do that so much. And so I ended up buying about $8,000 worth of a product, and I didn't know what to look for in the data. So I'm really just going to show you the mistake that I made so you can avoid making this mistake when you're doing early product sourcing. So the original product that I had bought doing wholesale, I had bought $8,000 worth of product, not too dissimilar from this. It was kind of a household product, but this has the exact same kind of mistake going on here. So this is a super fast selling like vitamin brand in this case. They might IP complain or something like that. But really the thing that tripped me up was I bought $8,000 of a listing that should have been selling really fast. You know, make sure you have a sales estimator. So I use seller amp that tells me how fast things sell on Amazon. So this is selling like over 14,000 times a month. And then I looked at that. I looked at the data. Everything looks good, but there is one kind of beginner mistake I should have been on the lookout for. So this right here is called Keepa. Shows you like the price history, sales history of an item. I mean, going to data buy box statistics, you can see over the last 30 days, what percentage of the sales have gone to each individual seller. And so, and this listing is actually a great example because you can see there's seven or eight sellers on this listing, but on the buy box statistics, there's only two or three sellers right here that have actually made a sale. And when you even dig further into that, you can see pattern right here, huge company, maybe even the biggest seller on Amazon right now. They have won 98% of the buy box over the last 30 days here, even though there's other companies on this listing. If you are like a super established seller, you've been selling on the listing for a really long time. Amazon trusts you kind of as the seller of that certain listing. There can be scenarios where the buy box does not rotate to you. So this add to cart button right up here, you know, you probably bought everything you've ever bought on Amazon through this add to cart button and that rotates evenly between sellers on most listings. But sometimes it doesn't. If it's a very well established seller has been on the listing for a long time, they're super well stocked. And I was just not, I didn't know how to look out for that kind of stuff. And so that's why I wish I had done some online arbitrage earlier on to help me avoid that mistake. I still have one of those products in my house. We use it at just kind of a, of a memorial of the, the failed product that I had early on in my Amazon business. And so after I made that big expensive $8,000 mistake, it was a ton of money for me at the time. Just recently started doing wholesale and all that. I knew I needed to do something a little bit easier, maybe a little bit of a slower learning curve, which for me was doing online arbitrage, kind of taking a step in a little bit of a different direction. I mean, that's where I started finding products. This one, I'll just show you an example of the type of products you're going to be on the lookout for. Here's just kind of standard like vitamin type product I was buying from Walmart. This is just from our uh, inventory management software here. I was able to buy kind of this two pack of, you know, Spring Valley biotin vitamins in this case. We we're buying these for 532 a unit. And then they were selling for around like 15 bucks a unit or so kind of fluctuated around there. But that all in all ended up being over like a thousand dollars profit just on this product. And there are tons of products that are like this out there on the internet. And I think online arbitrage is going to be probably the best place for a lot of you guys to start out. So in a second, I'll break down exactly how to find a profitable product. I'll show you a specific strategy that my team and I still use. But I just want to talk a little bit about our online arbitrage journey before that, kind of why I got more into the weeds with online arbitrage. As I was able to keep finding products like that, I was continuing to do college on the side. That's why this business model made so much sense for me. You probably have a job. You're probably in school. You're probably busy, right? And I was starting to run out of time to go out to those thrift stores and that kind of stuff and make calls during working hours because I was I was busy. I was in college, all that kind of stuff. And so with online arbitrage, I was able to spend my time whenever I had it, oftentimes late at night, other times in a class that I didn't really need to listen to, really can just kind of weave online arbitrage into your daily routine. And so I was going out using some softwares, I'll show you here in a second, to find those profitable products. And then eventually,
eventually, by the time I got into my junior, senior year of college, I was able to scale my business to the point where I needed more help spending my money. I was able to spend 20 or $30,000 a month on inventory. It was going great. We were profitable, doing decent sales on Amazon, but I was just simply running out of time. It was a limiting belief, so to speak, when I first started selling on Amazon is that I had to do a lot of the work, but that's when I started hiring virtual assistants to help me out. So I guess right around two years ago, at the time of recording this video, I hired some of my first virtual assistants from the Philippines. I was able to show them exactly how I was sourcing products. And then we were able to work together as a team and continue spending more and more money on products. And I was able to spend less and less of my own time manually digging through websites and all that good stuff. And that's something I'm really big on with online arbitrage is the fact that you can hire virtual assistants to source a lot of products for you after you know what you're doing. You can't rush into that part, unfortunately. You can hire prep centers to do a lot of the, you putting stickers on things and throwing it in boxes and shipping it off to Amazon. Cause I know I definitely didn't want to be spending my time putting things in boxes. That's just not what I'm about. I want to be a business owner, right? Not a business operator. I don't want to own a job in this case. And it was because I was able to kind of start building a team, start outsourcing things that by the time I was in my senior year, I was making well over a hundred thousand dollars a year in net profit, just trying to get the degree to have the piece of paper at that point. My senior year of college, I did about $650,000 in sales, which was also making really good money, especially for a college student. And then I did not ever have to go onto the job market. I haven't had a, a real job since like high school at this point, but it's honestly been an awesome blessing. So I want you to take advantage of that. Like I said, let's go ahead and jump into it here. I'll show you exactly how you can find a profitable product for yourself. So the easiest way that you're going to be able to find your first profitable product, I would say do this method. If you have like over a thousand bucks doing some online arbitrage, just to learn the ropes, maybe do uh, some in-store retail arbitrage, go scan the clearance aisle, that kind of thing. But really the first thing we want to do is start figuring out what types of products are other arbitrage sellers having success selling, where they're buying it from Ulta and Walmart and all those everyday websites, right? So there's a couple different starting plates you can use. Really, you just want to start with a brand that's being sold by other resellers. So a couple examples come to mind. So great value is one it's bought from Walmart. The only place you can buy this is Walmart. So anyone who's selling this product on Amazon bought it from Walmart, which means it's reasonable that the other things they sell might also be sourced from Walmart, Ulta, Target, so on, right? Another place to start is Nike. It's where a lot of beginners want to start out selling Nike. It's kind of the, the fun thing to sell, right? You can start from there. There's going to be big lists of other sellers who are just selling Nike, selling other, you know, beauty products, vitamins, all that kind of stuff that you can take advantage of kind of on an arbitrage basis. I'm going to start from this product just as an example, because it's Ulta beauty branded. People had to buy this from Ulta.com or Ulta in store, and then they're selling it on Amazon. So there's a good shot that the other stuff in their storefronts is going to be sourced from Ulta. And we might be able to figure out where they're getting it from. So to do this, you're going to need two simple tools. Number one, you're going to need Keepa. We looked at this a second ago. The other thing you're going to need is Selleramp. Selleramp is going to be your tool that you're going to use to source your products. And then Keepa is going to kind of show you the data. So on this Ulta branded product, I'm going to use Selleramp to look at the offers tab and find a different seller on this listing that has not a ton of feedback, especially if you're a beginner, you don't want to be competing with someone who's had over a thousand feedback on Amazon. That means they've sold a ton of product. This guy with, you know, 31 feedback is a little bit more likely to have, you know, some, some brands that are bought from everyday websites. So let's just go ahead and start looking through here for a second. Again, it's not going to be like a full breakdown by any means. I have other sourcing videos you can check out, but just want to introduce you to the concept here. So let's see this, this product right here, as we're going through here, you want to ask yourself a couple questions. Number one, can I buy it for the max cost option that seller is suggesting. This is all baked in. It's got the fees calculated. So if you think you can buy an item for that cost, then click the Google button and it's going to go ahead and search it for you. And you're going to be able to find out pretty quickly if you're able to get it profitably or not. The second component of that, you can see right here, we're having to buy it for $8. A lot of these were showing up at $16. The second component you're going to want to think about is coupons. So right there, I see a buy one, get one free sale. So that might be something to think about. Like if they're running that same buy one, get one free sale today, what's this, this lip sale? What is this? The clear lip, lip gloss right here. If they're running the same sale, that could be right there. So travel size, I believe is what we had. It said it was like a, a travel size right there, 0.05 ounces. This actually says it's way bigger. And this one was on the buy one, get one free sale that we were looking at. So like right away, we have a product that's somewhat close to profit. So we could open up the Amazon page here, see what the profit might be looking like. Plug in eight bucks there. So you can see it's, it doesn't quite meet our th standards, but literally the first item we looked at was somewhat interesting. Maybe I'm, I could be missing something here, but it looks to be the same thing. The travel size is bigger than it used to be. You're not going to have anyone upset that they got twice as much as they paid for. I'm assuming this is all legit and all looks the exact same here. Right away, we found something that's at least somewhat interesting. Or not, might, you might actually be a little more interested in this, especially based on the recent prices here. You can see it's been kind of at like 17 bucks. Yeah, right there. It's been like 17 bucks or so. So see that 17 bucks. Yeah, you actually would be interested in buying this product. I don't think this is like an amazing product, but it definitely sells quick. It meets most of the kind of profit standards there. It's right at standard. I usually look for better products, you know, hit a home run, but right away, like there's something that's somewhat
somewhat profitable, something you could at least think about selling on Amazon. So I won't get any too much more into the weeds on this kind of stuff. If you wanna see a full sourcing breakdown, I'll leave a, a, a link right up there in the other corner. You guys can go check that out. But really just look through this here, pair all this information together. So can I buy it for this cost? Are there too much competition? Is Amazon on the listing? That's another red flag I'm looking out for. And then using the Keepa chart over here, how consistent is the pricing? So I'm looking at this orange line to show me the prices over time. And you know, one thing I see right here is the price is a little bit higher than it tends to be over time, but it's nothing too out of the ordinary. So that all that kind of stuff, you're going to add up. And you know, if you ever see a price that's going way straight down, you probably don't want to jump onto a sinking ship, right? You're gonna be able to learn those little patterns to look out for, but do this if you want to find your first couple products doing arbitrage. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, just kind of detailing my story as I started on Amazon, building that all the way up to about $4 million in sales. You can absolutely do the same thing. I wanna leave you with a couple quick tips though. The first and biggest thing that I see a lot of beginners do, don't fall into this trap is like overcomplicating things at the start. Selling on Amazon is a difficult business. It does take significant effort, but don't overcomplicate things. Don't don't worry about hiring VAs and getting employees and all that good stuff. Focus on the basics, focus on what I just broke down for you in this video, and then start to worry about the complicated stuff later on. So if you're ready to get started with online arbitrage, that business model is breaking down towards the end of the video. All you need to go do is get a Keepa free trial, get a Celerant free trial, start reverse sourcing. That's how you're going to find your first products. Really what you're doing with that process, trying to start learning those brands, start learning those categories that you want to dig a little bit deeper into, like we're talking about there. And that's how you're going to be able to really take off on Amazon. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and got a ton of value out of it. If if you're looking for a more step-by-step -step guide with a lot of detail, some stuff you'll see not on YouTube as well, weekly calls, private group, all that good stuff. You can check out the FBA roadmap that's gonna be linked down below. That's our step-by-step -step course, two-week money-back guarantee on that as well. So if you're not gonna make money in it, I don't wanna make money out of either. If you guys have any questions, comments, anything like that, feel free to drop those down below as well. I'm always happy to answer those for you. And I really appreciate you guys watching and I will see you next time.